My name is Philip. I uh, live in southwest France. My parents had lived in England, um, south of London. They they bought their house there in in 1957, and I was born in that house in 1959. So in April this year, they'd been married, I believe, 35 years. On the 18th of April, my father became a bit unwell at home. Both my parents at home. My, my father had been getting worse over the last few years anyway because he had Parkinson's. And uh, he would often sort of disappear into a world for one and come back. But generally he was okay, but I think my mother was starting to find it a bit difficult to cope with him at home and she couldn't get a huge amount of conversation out of him. But uh, anyway, on the 18th of April, my father became ill and uh, wasn't quite sure what it was. Seems to get a little bit better on the Sunday and the Monday, but come the Wednesday, he really wasn't very well again. And uh, both my brother and I suggest that my mother call an ambulance, which she did. And my father was sent to St. Helier's Hospital on Wednesday, the 22nd of April. Um, and we were told it was probably COVID. Uh, wasn't a, a big surprise as that's what we thought. Um, and on the Thursday morning, uh, the, the morning after my father was admitted, my, my mother started to feel unwell. So we suspected it was probably the same thing for her. And come Friday evening, she was also admitted to St. Helio's Hospital. Again, with a strong suspicion it was COVID, as she had low oxygen levels when she was admitted. Over the weekend, my father didn't deteriorate too much. By Monday the 27th, we had a little bit of hope that he would pull through. Um, come Tuesday the 28th, we were advised that my father really wasn't very well. And um, unless come the Wednesday morning, there was a significant improvement that they would put him on end of life care. Meanwhile, my mother, the night of the 27th, had a heart attack um, I, I think related to COVID, I, I think it was the virus attacking the organs. My mother was in very good health before she was admitted to hospital. She's, she's 87, my father would have been 89. On the Wednesday morning, we were advised my father was being put on to end of life care. So I asked the nurse, the, the palliative nurse, if we could have a video conference so I could say goodbye to him because obviously it was impossible for me to travel to the UK and say bye bye and, um, and, and we were in shutdown. Also my brother couldn't go either, he, he lived in Bristol and, and he took advice and was told that he couldn't go. So on the 29th, uh, Wednesday of, of April, I spoke to my mother first in video conference that the nurse very kindly set up on her own personal phone. She set up a, a FaceTime call for us. And I spoke to my mother and she was absolutely fine, apart from the fact she had a mask covering her face and she couldn't talk to me and I, I, I could understand uh, what she was saying. She didn't seem too bad. She'd been told my father was being put on end of life care, so she was very upset about that. But uh, I left her expecting maybe to speak to her the following day. And then I spoke to my father on the video call. He was by now very poorly. His his eyes weren't open. He'd lost weight. He was he was extremely unwell. He recognised my voice though. I, I know he recognised my voice and a couple of things I said. So I said goodbye to him at a distance. And um Thursday morning I got a call from my brother to say that my mother had passed away during the night. In fact, she'd had another heart attack. So sadly, she passed away. Um, meanwhile, my father was still hanging on. So my brother and I took the decision not to say anything to my father ab about my mother passing away. We, we couldn't see the point in telling him and my father hung on until the Saturday, Saturday the 2nd, and he passed away. 
I don't know if you call it peacefully, he was on morphine in good care. The nurse and the care, both, both my parents had. My parents were very organized and left instructions that they be cremated, even though they were both Catholic, not really practicing anymore, but they wanted to be cremated and the ashes deposited in the family tomb in Brittany, which is where my mother was born. So we decided rather than try and narrow down our 10 people, because my parents had so many friends and family, we couldn't imagine the task to select which 10 should attend a funeral. So we decided to do a cremation. Um, I went back to the UK two weeks after with my brother and we started to empty the house out and we spent four or five days, uh, I think, in the house doing that. And it was very tough being in the house without my parents. They'd lived in that house 63 years and I was born in it. Um, and came back to France. I was able to collect the urns. We had told the family that we would, um, when COVID allowed, we'd hold an event to celebrate my parents' lives. I realized very quickly that I was not going to be able to handle being at home with these urns in the house. My own wife said, do you want to put them on the shelf? And I said, no, gosh, that's the last thing I want to see them every time I come down the stairs. One of the ways I've expressed my grief is through anger. I've been losing my temper very quickly over insignificant things. I think I realized that I needed help. Perhaps help is the wrong word, but I needed to speak to people to try and deal with my grief. Okay, I'm 61, I lost my parents. I had them for a very long time. I don't think I was frustrated, but it certainly affected my grieving through the grief process. The, the fact that I couldn't say bye-bye properly. There's no doubt about it that, that I think that means that I don't have closure, whatever that means. I'm not sure what closure means really, but I think it will be helpful when I put the urns in the tombs. For me that will be a final mark of respect to my parents. Time is a healer and after that hopefully I'll just keep the good memories. I mean I don't think any death can be perfect, you know, it doesn't matter how people die, it's always going to be difficult, uh, you know. I'm a little bit haunted by the memory of my father looking very, very unwell, poor chap. I don't remember clearly what I said, but clearly I touched a nerve when I was talking to him and uh, he showed me his reaction. So I know he understood me, uh, I think. The fact I didn't have a final conversation with my mother, I didn't say thank you to her. I think that was difficult. I, I was able to do that with my father, to thank him, tell him I loved him. I don't think I said that properly to my mother. And then, you know, uh, hey, shit happens, that's life. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully she knew that anyway. You know, I, I hope she knew I was grateful. <laughs>